Silver Dave here, and it's Friday, it's the end of the week. Gold has been moving up and down across a week. So what could move gold in the next upcoming week? Well, let's find out. So one of the major talking points over the course of, I would say, these past few months is the demand for stimulus, right? And most gold bugs and uh, people who like gold and silver and all the precious metals, the monetary precious metals, are saying, we need stimulus. We need stimulus to bring the price of precious metals up. Now, I'm not of the same opinion. See, I don't think we need stimulus to change the price of gold. Gold has never needed, I mean, gold has benefited from stimulus in the past. But gold during a recession, it's never needed stimulus to move upwards. It moves more upwards when there is stimulus but it still moves and or maintains a slight upward trend when there is an overall recession. So for me, it's a little bit un incomprehensible why a lot of people want stimulus, other than the fact that, you know, it could make gold skyrocket. <laughs> that, 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 well, I, then I understand. So are we seeing stimulus? And this is something that I'm gonna say something that might uh, make people angry and uh, unhappy because if you are the bearer of bad news, uh, people don't like you. But here is the bad news. I don't think we'll see stimulus. And we won't see stimulus, not because that, you know, uh, Congress and the government is incompetent, but rather we've created a system for them where they have no incentive to pass the stimulus package, right, from both sides of the aisle. None of them have an incentive to pass stimulus. Now, there's a few reasons. One, if they pass it now, nobody looks good. You know, basically, they've delayed the whole situation. The stock market is rising. You know, the narrative, the story they can tell if they pass stimulus now, it doesn't work. Now, people are getting angry. They are sad. They're like, oh no, you know, right now I might end up on the streets. Yeah, you might end up on the streets, but you know what? Congress doesn't care. Congress cares about the story they can tell. And Congress cares about another thing, right? People tend to group Congress as like a bunch of sterile bureaucrats. They're not, they're human beings. And what you know what is, <laughs> is like part of being human? Humans are greedy. Now, another reason why Congress and the people working in government might not want, this is a theory, I'm not saying anybody specifically has this in their head or is their intention, right? This is a disclaimer, but I'm saying that there is an incentive in Congress because they are not like directly tied to the stock market, but they can influence the stock market in major ways, right? They can actually turn the stock market around. They can announce stimulus or not announce stimulus, and the market can go up or it can go down. Um, it's, or they can announce lockdown, like in March. Uh, you know, there were members of Congress, lawmakers, that, uh, vote in, that voted, you know, to have a shutdown, and uh, they sold uh, positions, you know. Uh, there was this, uh, who was, what was her name? Kelly Loafer from uh, Georgia. Well, and uh, David Perdue, they um, they were in the meetings for lockdown, and right after coming out of the meetings, before there was an announcement, they sold their positions. Now, here's the thing: if you find a rat in the market, like in a food market, do you think that's the only rat in the market? No, you know that this place has a pest problem. Well, we caught two rats, okay? And now people are like, do you think that these are the only two people in Congress 
that, you know, own stocks? No, they're not the only two people in Congress to own stocks. So I think there are more people in Congress. I don't know who. There is no conspiracy, right? This is a question of interest. This means that they don't even need to talk to each other. These individuals will not have an interest to pass this legislation. You're like, why don't they? If they pass legislation, the stock market will explode. Yeah, but if they don't pass the legislation and the stock market crashes, and after it crashes, they come in and they pass legislation and they do all the stimulus, they can make even more money. <laughs> This is like the thing, you know, um, I've worked in different businesses where like, you know, we had some contracts with certain uh, clients, you know, that were, it was like around uh, 1.2 million. And then, um, and then like, you know, we had a conflict of interest with a new potential client. And basically I was told, you know, we should drop like our old client and go with the new client because they paid us more. <laughs> This is capitalism. Of course, they will try to always do stuff that will make more money. This is part of capitalist society. It's, I'm almost here saying like, it's, no, it's not normal. You know, you shouldn't expect, you should hold these people to higher standards. But no, they are humans and they live in a capitalist society. So they're gonna try and make money. That's like the most basic thing. If you look at their response, like uh, I think there's a video of uh, Kelly Loafer's response when she was asked, you know, should members of Congress be barred from trading stocks? Look, what's at stake here in this election yeah. is the American dream. Uh, yeah. That's what's under attack. Uh, they attack me. I don't know, man. A um, <laughs> lie conspired with the Democrats by. This is an attack on every single... It's bullshit. She was, uh, she traded stocks before. Her husband owns, I think, uh, ICE, which is a major, uh, it's like the Chicago Stock Exchange for Options. Um, Congress people own stocks. They own, uh, they own, I mean, like they're not, it's not barred for them to own stocks. It's not illegal for them to own stocks, but it is a clear, it's a clear conflict of interest. And I'm not talking conspiracy theory here. I'm talking that, you know, if you put people who make policies that affect the economy and you give them the right to own, like, uh, and they can, like, legally, without any uh, restrictions, own part of the market for which they decide policies on, of course they have a conflict of interest. Like, I, they don't even need to talk to each other. They will do, they will act in a certain way because the environment, you know, makes them act in a certain way. It's like if you put a bunch of people in front of lions, they're going to run away from lions. If you put a bunch of people in front of a buffet, they will eat the buffet. It's, it's like, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty uh, evident that this is what they're going to do. What are they going to do? Well, I think, you know, before shutdown, a lot of uh, people in Congress, like there are two that are known, but I'm sure there are more, um, sold their positions. Now the positions went sky high after they like started removing restrictions. They did one QE. They're like, oh wow, like it goes sky high. Um, we weren't really expecting to dissociate so much. Well, now what's the opportunity we can do now? Well, we can choose to not pass QE and uh, short the market. <laughs> well, some of them might short the market and they might buy like the Direction 3X, <laughs> you know, <laughs> ETF. It's not like they're buying options directly and uh, they're buying a bundled product. They can do it through like, it's even more obscure. They can do it through their broker and say like, oh, buy this and then uh, put it into like my portfolio and so on to for some hedging or if you're a recession. And everywhere on the news, everybody's talking about, oh, there's a lack of stimulus. There's like a potential disconnect from the recession. It's like perfect. You know, they can do it and there's no consequence like for the individual because anyways, everybody expects a recession. <laughs> you know, everybody expects a stock market crash and Honestly, like I see stimulus like as a piece of legislation where they're not going to pass it until the market crashes. And then when the market crashes, it's the perfect moment for everybody's interest to align to pass it. And it's, it's, it's a little bit cynical, but 
honestly, like if you put a system where the goal of this system is to make money and you give people right, you know, the power to make policies was in the system. Um, and how can you be surprised? Like, how can you be surprised by what they do? It's not even surprising. It's pretty clear. It's kind of like, you know, those, um, those uh, t- reality TV shows. I don't, re- I don't watch TV, but those reality TV shows where they, they, uh, they, they show you, um, you know, couples, you know, who are, they bring them to, onto an island and they try to test them and they put a lot of hot single people on the island too. And then, uh, and then, uh, of course, there's affairs. But you know what? Why would I be surprised if people have affairs in that situation? You put them there, and then you put a lot of hot other people there, um, and you don't give them any other like space. They can't go anywhere else. Their only like <laughs> their only uh, I would say uh, activity is to talk to other hot people. They're going to have affairs, you know, and they're stuck on an island for fuck's sake, <laughs> you know. It's not even re- it's like. Of course, the show is going to have people and then they're like, oh, it's reality TV. No, it's stage. You stuck a bunch of people on an island. They've got nowhere to go. Of course, they will do, you know, the only uh, (laughs) entertainment they have, which is flirting with other people and then making out and then doing uh, (laughs) raunchy things to each other. (laughs) You know, (laughs) what do do people expect? (laughs) I mean, and here's the same, you know, we put a system where, you know, the objective is to make money. Yeah. And then we gave people power to make policies on economy, on the economy. You know, you can pass stimulus or you cannot pass stimulus. And uh, right now they're looking, okay, the market is way overvalued. People, experts are coming out and saying that it's overvalued. Nah, we can choose to not pass stimulus. If I don't pass stimulus today, I can like wait until later. And if it doesn't pass, I can, um, and the market crashes and we decide to pass a really big stimulus. And right before the markets rise, I can buy more stocks. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty good plan to make a lot of money. And, uh, why would you be surprised? You, they're they're trained in a system to make money, and then you give them power to make economic policies. This is just like, I don't know. It's not surprising that people want to cash in. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is uh, that's my analysis. I really think that okay. Let's talk. Be serious. How can we benefit? Like we're obviously not in the in, but how can we decide where to put our money uh, in a way that that uh that is not so influenced by what i would say these policymakers decide right well one of the things that i i said in the beginning is that gold doesn't really need stimulus gold is a supranational currency what you have to bet on is what other countries will do relative to gold and you're thinking what do you mean other countries and other investors well you have to see that the U.S. stock market is not just domestic investors. There's other investors out there. Now, if other investors start selling off U.S. assets, it's because these foreign investors are like, yeah, the dollar is weakening. The, ass- the economy is tanking. It's really risky. It seems like, you know, these assets are kind of like uh, expensive and crap because there's no-, there's no economy backing it up. And the dollar's weak, the dollar is backed by the economy and also uh, public spending, all sorts of other stuff. And also companies with, you know, being well produced. I mean, it's fiat currency, but it depends that, the, you know, the whole system works. And if you, they see that the system's not working, they're going to pull out. And they don't really care, like, about uh, how things end up. They only care to maintain their, their purchasing power. And uh, that is how the global markets work. So most likely what will happen is we will see a weakening, continuous weakening of the dollar, which tends to lead to an increase in the strength of gold. And if the markets crash, um, people will have it and, and gold is strong. People will have an inherent interest in moving into gold. And we've seen this over the past few days, right? We saw on like uh, the 8th of December, right? Before the 8th, people were expecting stimulus, stimulus, stimulus. Okay, no stimulus. Markets on the 8th, uh, sorry, on the 9th, 
we had a market correction, some people sold off gold. I think people sold off here to shore up their stock market positions. They sold off gold, but the dollar, it was just like smashed, like right afterwards. It went up a little bit when people started selling off stocks. I was saying that, you know, that looks like international investors are trying to pull out of the stock market, the US stock market. They're holding dollars the short term, but then afterwards, some of the investors will move out of the dollar over the next few days, you know, because not all the markets are open at the same time. So they'll move out of the dollar market and they might buy up assets elsewhere. What could they buy? Well, they could trade their dollars for the Chinese yuan. Uh, let's see what is the yuan. So I've got the US uh, NASDAQ. Let's see, yuan uh, dollar, Chinese yuan dollar. Did it increase? No, it didn't. Ah, this is interesting. No, wait. Yes, the, the yuan has gained strength. Oh, sorry, I was reading it backwards. So $1 used to get you 7 yuan in May, and now $1 gets you 6.5. So the yuan is gaining strength. And uh, I think that, you know, they're pulling out and there's a lot of attractive, like, uh, attractive bonds in that the, that the uh, Chinese uh, Communist Party issued, you know, now people are buying party bonds. And uh, they're like, yeah, the economy's booming over there. So, you know, they're going to put their money there um, for now. Maybe, you know, investors are mercenaries. They'll put money where the returns are highest. And if the Chinese bonds offer a 3% return rate and they have like, uh, and if the currency is stable and getting stronger by the minutes compared to the dollar, you know, investors are going to pull out and then shove it where they have make more money. Welcome to uh, capitalism 101. <laughs> People move where they make more money. So they're going to move there. Um, and, you know, I think it's like we're cycling through the market. And I do think Congress is on purpose, not passing. Like, I'm not saying they're on purpose, they're coordinated. But overall, we have given people working there the conflict of interest for which they don't have an interest to necessarily pass the bill right now. There's so many things that are aligned for them to not pass the bill, right? And uh, I think, you know, what we're going to see is further stock market like trimmings. You know, the stock market's going to teeter. Right now, a lot of the foreign investors are like, uh, we don't really want to see this show like how it is right now. And, um, and um, most likely, you know, it's going to slowly, slowly drift downwards until a point where it's no longer sustainable and boom, we have a crash. Now, what you'll see is right after the crash, uh, we're going to have emergency sessions and so on. And the economy is doing so badly. Everybody comes in, comes out of woodworks, says that we need to unite. We need to uh, overcome the difficulty till the point where we get the uh, medic medicines out and then everybody's immunized. And then they do stimulus. And then they prop the market back up again. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, it's really predictable. That's what's going to happen. Um, it's at least that's this is a scenario. If I just look at not what people say, not what people want, but what people are doing, it is the most likely scenario. Because what I'm seeing is a lot of people saying they're trying their best. They're working on what they can do, how they can do it. I what I've seen is I've seen um, people in Congress sell sell uh, trade stocks in their benefit. I see that right now, there is a huge opportunity to make money. The markets are way overvalued. In terms of like relative GDP, yeah, they're, they're, they're like bubbly. Um, and if the markets crash, nobody will blame them. Like nobody, everybody's gonna blame like, oh yeah, it's the poor, it's the economy. You know what, if the markets do crash, what it's going to do, this is pretty clear. If the markets do crash, it will take down a lot of these funds, these ETFs. And if these ETFs shrink or they crash and lose value, um, they become cheap in assets, but it will crush all the existing investors whose pension funds are invested into this. <laughs> and then what a lot of these, they'll make money, 
but then they'll try to prop it up with uh, by devaluing the dollar and um, and devaluing the dollar, injecting cash, you know, to shore up these funds, basically bring the numbers back up. But actually, you know, the value is different. You know, like I said, you can become a Zimbabwean <laughs> billionaire pretty soon, pretty quickly. Um, yeah, that's how you become a Zimbabwean billionaire. You know, um, it's it's kind of like the best way to move value without moving money. <laughs> that's, that's what they're going to do. And uh, it's going to be, um, it's going to drive a, I don't know what the long-term effects are. I honestly don't know. I just know that like looking at this and looking at how, how the markets are moving and looking at how the different currency markets are moving, looking at how like the what the predictors are saying, like the machine learning predictors, you know, they're seeing like despite the current movements, you know, even if there's no stimulus and we are uh, in the same situation, it does see that we're in a recession and that gold has a net positive like trajectory. Uh, it doesn't know like what will happen after stimulus. I, I honestly think that the dollar will, it's going to get into uh, be in a lot, a lot of hurt. Um, I do believe that, uh, I have to search this Swiss national bank devaluation. Uh, I believe in recent days that the Swiss national bank, you know, has, a uh, has been intervening on the markets and they've intervened in the range of 93 billion uh, dollars, 93 billion uh, Swiss francs to date. I don't have the latest article. Let me see. Uh, let's see, sort by date. Uh, Swiss initiative referendum, Swiss franc threatens strength. They have lowered, yeah. I can't find the article, but the latest figures I saw was that Swiss National Bank was actually injecting around uh, <laughs> nine, 94 billion Swiss francs, which is around 110 US dollars in, uh, into the market uh, to shore up, to like devalue the Swiss franc. You're like, why do they want to devalue the Swiss franc? It's because like they still need to trade with the United States. This is what I'm saying. Like if you're buying gold now and your currency has not devalued, like it has not devalued yet against the US dollar, um, you better dump your currency too in the, in the midterm because, because everybody, at least in the midterm, still expects to trade with the United States and have the United States as its largest trading partner. Every single one of these countries, by devaluing their currencies, they're not thinking that, oh, like all my primary assets are going to, like that I need for production are going to be more expensive. They are going to be more expensive. If you devalue the currency just to think in the short term, oh, I need to sell, you're not taking into consideration the inputs, right? Your input costs are going to be higher because you've also devalued your own currency against uh, raw materials, you're devaluing against commodities, you're going to devalue against gold, you're going to devalue against silver, you're going to devalue against platinum, palladium, uh, oil. Uh, you know, I, I'm not too familiar with the oil markets, but oil markets are driven by the dollar and demand. So it's a little bit similar to silver, um, but the, it's, uh, there's a lot more big players in that space, which is, <laughs> yeah, negative oil. Um, yeah, which is uh, which is something that I tend to avoid because actually they're really, really huge, the players in oil. So yeah, if you bought like 20th of April negative oil, well, that was one thing you should have been watching for. If you could buy a $12 or negative dollar oil, that would have been a good moment to buy a ton of oil. And then you would have made, you know, infinite money well not really infinite depending on uh the supply you could buy you couldn't buy an infinite amount of negative oil you probably would have made 50 dollars per uh, barrel um it depends on how many barrels then it's pretty much just how much storage space you can actually get <laughs> and uh, if you could store i don't know um typically most oil companies per year 
they can trade up to 90, at least 100 uh, metric tons of oil. So, no, 100, I think it's, what was it? 100 billion, million tons, million barrels. Um, so, yeah, I think they had a fielding. I think most, a lot of these oil traders made a killing in this moment. You know, from between April and now, it, it was been, it's been a good year. For those who are on the right side of the trade, it's been an amazing year. For the ones who are on the, um, on the wrong side of the trade, it's going to be a tough year. Uh, what I think is going to happen to the monetary metals, I think we're going to see, you know, relative stability. Basically, what's going to happen is, we'll be staying around the 1830 levels. I don't expect to see too much movement unless there are some major players that want to buy up more gold or sell more gold. But if things stay as they are and the, the market is kind of sort of downward trending, the stock market, and then potentially going into a crash, um, what we might see is actually just gold just staying grinding sideways, which is not too bad for gold. And which is basically what happens is that people are cycling out of the stock market because they're seeing that, you know, maybe like we need to take some trimmings. Oh, maybe I might crash. There's a negative sentiment in the market. And all of a sudden they're like cycling through the dollar. It's going to have an effect on the price of gold. Um, gold will go down a bit. They move out of the dollar. Gold goes up a bit. And then, you know, some investors are looking across the market and saying, what can we buy? What can we buy? What can we buy? They start buying a bit more of gold. And uh, it's going to push prices up a little bit, down a little bit. We're going to go trend upwards, right? But slowly, basically. That's what I think is going to happen from this point onwards. Um, gold isn't, like, if even if we're going towards $2,000 gold, that's a 10% increase. And it's, for gold, it's a lot. Like, it's a 10% increase is quite a bit of an increase. Now, how much gold can increase with that plus stimulus uh <laughs> i don't know it, it would be it would be a lot but it would be uh something that that's hard to predict it's just really hard to predict but it's most likely a lot um how for how long it could last i think you know i said that like if you look at 2019 it was pretty much like we were at rock bottom for gold 2019 was kind of like rock bottom. Beginning of 2019 was rock bottom for gold. And uh, pretty much end of 2019 is when we start seeing a breakout, right? This is a breakout. Gold was sort of in this, this like no, uh, no good zone for, for quite a while. And what you have to remember is when central banks become net buyers of gold, they are also, they tend to be always on the wrong side of the trade, right? They, their objective is not actually to make profit. Their objective is to balance their balance sheets and so on. Um, when there is a sort of recession and they do need to do more uh, active management to sort of protect their purchasing power, they don't really care about like profit and loss. Um, they do go into gold. They, however, um, they typically go into gold for a, quite a long period, depending on how long the recession is. And we could be in a, quite a big recession, especially, especially the part I'm betting on. It's not a nice bet, but it's a realistic bet, is that Congress won't pass anything significant to shore up the economy until the market has a horrific crash. And basically it aligns with the economy. And this isn't because there's a conspiracy or there's some plan or anybody active plans it. It's, they don't even need to think about it. It's that we, we've provided the incentive in the system for people who are policymakers to do this, right? So I'm not pointing any names. I'm not saying who is going to do this. I'm saying that, you know, overall, there are two people like they know that sold like that traded stocks at uh during the first lockdown it's like you're finding two rats in the market um if you find two rats in a market you probably got a pest problem so there are probably more rats 
but you just don't know who they are, but you know rats have an incentive to come to the market because they're food. There's, you know, this is the same thing. It's like putting out the buffet and you've got rats. What do you expect? Rats are gonna show up and eat the buffet. <laughs> it's like, um, don't be surprised, you know, you, and then you tell people, yeah, but I expect these rats to be well-trained rats or domestic rats, and uh, they don't, you know, they should obey the commands, but, Come on, that's like that's like me. I have a dog. That's like me eating a steak in front of my dog and then leaving the room and expecting my dog to not want a juicy steak. Like, <laughs> of course he's gonna eat my steak. He's <laughs> he's a dog, and I just put the a delicious steak steak in front of him. Um, if you have a rat, you know, if you have this all you can eat or all you can make a buffet called the stock market and then you give people the tools to influence how which way it goes um are you surprised that they use those tools <laughs> I, that, that's just like it, it just astounds me a little bit that people are shocked but i no i doesn't because people don't tend to think the way i i think it, I, i'm a little bit more uh, I'm not a pessimist. I'm not an optimist. I think overall in the end we'll be fine, but I'm sort of uh, I try to strike a balance between optimism and uh, and pessimism, and I try to look at things you know as they are and not as what I want them to be or what other people tell me they should it should be. And uh, yeah, so I think we're going to see overall market weakness. We're going to see gold, you know, sort of grinding sideways, staying around the 18, below 1850, above 1830-ish, you know. And, uh, and uh, it's going to stay there roughly. And then we're going to see all the foreign exchange markets, you know, strengthening against the dollar. We're going to see probably more weakness in uh, the stock market. It's going to, you know, there were points where it kind of dropped and then it just recovered pretty quickly. There wasn't further drops. I think this is this is just market exuberance. I mean, if you have more and more and more pain, it's going to really start hurting, and then we're going to see some pretty uh, rough action going on in the market. Not something you want to see at this moment. Um, and I really hope people stay safe. And yeah, it's going to be tough times ahead. Um, well, to conclude. I think we're not going to see stimulus this year. I don't think gold needs stimulus though to just stay where it is or to move slightly upwards, maybe around 3%, 4%. Um, if we do have stimulus, probably we'll move up faster. And uh, and I think, you know, uh, the stock market is going to probably break pretty soon. And, uh, and we're going to see some pretty drastic action across the whole market. Anyways, this is Dave. Um, thank you for watching. If you like the content, click the like button. If you want to subscribe, please subscribe. I post content frequently. Stay up to date. You know, don't be blind. I can't tell the future, but I do have my uh, perspective on how I see things. Um, if you find it useful, like use it, but it's your money. I'm not an expert at anything. I'm not a financial expert. Um, I don't know everything. I just built <laughs> some programs, you know, to help me navigate uh, these rough times. And um, and uh, yeah, and also like I, if I have a friend who asked me why did I write these programs to like try and predict, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, <laughs> the price of gold. I told them <laughs> I told them that it was to save five dollars on my next gold purchase, <laughs> and they were like, hey, "Really? Do you think that you can like?" save money on your next gold purchase well i did i saved a little bit when i bought at the very bottom around um around uh the 1700s level i was telling people you know it's probably probably seeing a bottom out here and then we're just going to go we're going to see inversion because because uh for it to hit that target it probably needs to invert here rather than go parabolic upwards that would be a very weird movement actually i think people were expecting more like faster stimulus, more like aggressive action, people propping up the market, but because uh, because that's what uh, Senate Congress does, people also forget that, you know, they can choose to not prop up the market and then wait for a crash, buy stocks, and then prop up the market, look like heroes, 
and then win their <laughs> win their seats again next year and say that you know they saved the day they propped up the markets they made sure everybody got their checks after it was so hard and then we passed a hard winter and we should all celebrate now that the times are over and i think most people forget that uh that's because of these people that that you're suffering right now and probably you know we might see a pension implosion soon but hey you know the most of these senators are above like 70 they'd be dead anyway so <laughs> what do they care about future people's pensions i mean they won't even be here anymore in like five six years you know and they'll, they're old people also forget like these little policy makers they're so old they're like do you expect to see them most a lot of them are like 70 65 in five years times you know they could be dead i think yeah people die at 70s you know that's the average lifespan of a human <laughs> it's like it's like we have a living zombie like if you had to say anything we do have living zombies making these decisions and um what else they can they do they can make a little bit of money and give it to their grandkids <laughs> just it's such a hilarious system and people are surprised um it's yeah anyways stay in good health click the like button subscribe stay tuned for more content and uh yeah i don't like saying that i said so but i did say that we probably will see more market weakness across the week and um and yeah uh yeah i i don't necessarily like uh, I don't know if we're going to see even more market weakness. I don't know if we're going to crash next week. I, if I had to give one expectation is I think Monday we're going to move up a little bit more and it will be false exuberance because actually there won't be any stimulus and it would not be a buying opportunity. It will be, it will be kind of scary. And I would suggest staying on the sidelines for a bit until you see stimulus um, or a proposal for stimulus and then see how the markets react. Because obviously, like, the stocks aren't going anywhere. Um, if anything has to go bankrupt, by then they'll go bankrupt. And actually, it'll be kind of a culling. So whatever remains after the crash, you know, wait like six months and then buy ETFs again. You know, repeat, rinse and repeat the next, for the next eight years. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you for watching. Um, hope you have a great weekend. Dave out.